Hey everyone, good morning. I'm Shriram from Walmart. Good morning, KubeCon. My name is Manish Vitolia. I'm not going to make you wait. <laughs> I know waiting is really difficult. It's very hard, like waiting at the airport to board a plane, or even waiting for a simple download to complete on your laptop. It's really hard. Similarly, waiting at checkout register within a store for a few minutes is like an eternity. We at Walmart believe checkout register as the last and critical step in the customer's journey. We needed to ensure that customer continues to get best experience throughout their shopping journey. Today, we are going to take you through the journey of modernizing point of sale checkout application by leveraging Kubernetes and microservices within store. Well, with that said, who here do not know what or who Walmart is by raise of hands? I'd be curious to see that. Well, nobody. Great. But anyway, I just created the slides, so I'll just go through them. To give a brief history of, about ourselves, from a humble beginning, as a small discount retailer in Roger, Arkansas, Walmart had opened up thousands of stores, both in US and internationally. Through innovation, we are creating a seamless experience to let customers shop anytime and anywhere, online, through mobile devices, and in-store. Our long-serving mission has been to help customers save money so they can live better. We are passionate about this mission. Every technology we create is to serve the customers. Walmart culture is built on four basic beliefs. Service to the customer, respect for the individual, strive for excellence, and act with integrity. These beliefs have been the recipe of our success for many years. Our culture is the reason we have been able to help our customers globally. When we say Walmart, the first thing that comes to mind is scale. So let's quickly talk about what Walmart scale is like. We are just huge. Walmart operates around 11,000 retail stores worldwide. We serve about 265 million customers, both online and in-store, on a weekly basis. And Walmart employs approximately 2.2 million employees around the world. We have significant presence in e-commerce world as well. And we have not been able to achieve this scale without the help of technology. As an example, in the 80s, we installed the largest private satellite system in the US, connecting our operations with voice, data, and video communications. Almost a decade ago, we started using RFID to improve our supply chain efficiency. And point-of-sale checkout application within the store is no, no stranger to accelerated technology advancement. We have various ways we help our customers to complete their last step in their shopping journey, like, like self-checkout, checkout with me, scan and go, and checkout register. Our business does drive us to always wanting to provide a seamless, consistent checkout experience for our customers in a timely manner, even under non-ideal situations. So it's, it's important to understand some of the background on checkout application. So last couple of decades, we have been using legacy point-of-sale checkout system, and it's still going strong. This system was built with highest level of resiliency, where required business data was presented, was presented on the edge. I would say it was our first edge compute we have had, where store-specific data was on in-store servers. So registers will reach out to in-store servers and get data from data located in data center, and any transactions data would be stored and forwarded to back to the data center. So more than four years ago, we started rolling out our first cloud-native checkout application as a move towards moving from legacy to modern stack architecture, where data and the application was located on cloud. However, with this cloud, application was accessed remotely over WAN network from the checkout applications located in store. They had some limitations, just accessing the applications over WAN network, over remotely uh, checkout applications for customer experience. As an example, regional network issues can happen, and that can happen because of some inclement weather, constructions related activities in the stores or around areas, upgrades not going as planned, or even some bad changes being rolled out into cloud, and customers are impacted because of that. Because of our scale, and large number of customers who walk into the store, even smallest of an impact, like few minutes of an impact, is, gets magnified across 
across the stores, and it affects the shopping journey. During a WAN network failure, we fail our business traffic to satellite. With satellite comes latency, which slows down the response in point of sale checkout registers. While customers can continue to check out, their response is slow and affects the customer experience. So looking at the potential problems and fallout with the current architecture, we decided to take our modern application, checkout applications, closer to the customer at Edge. We define Edge as where customer connects with Walmart stores, where we are closer to the customers, where interactions with customers are taking place, where applications can run in offline and autonomous mode, where application can work with and without cloud. So more than two years ago, we started introducing checkout application powered by Kubernetes at Edge, where checkout register will connect with checkout application in Kubernetes and get business data from the cloud. This helped in bringing checkout applications closer to the customers within the store. So if the service or the data is not remotely accessible from cloud, customers can successfully complete their last step in the shopping journey within the store, and Edge is still functional. However, this solution didn't come without our fair share of challenges that we needed to solve. As an example, first being like, how do we roll out services and Kubernetes cluster across thousands of stores across the world? How do we co-locate the data with the service at the edge? How do we improve the time to market? How to bring the isolation to the services so that application is fault tolerant and does not affect the customer's experience? And how do we improve the productivity so developers can quickly build and deliver to the business? Apart from this, there were a few more questions that needed to be addressed. How to manage, orchestrate, and configure a given service, along with making sure we keep it secure and achieve resiliency by making best practices default. And biggest of all, given the scale in we operate in, how do we manage and keep the deployments consistent across all the stores? After some exploration, we went ahead with microservices managed by Kubernetes as our solution. As everyone might already be aware of, Kubernetes solves orchestration, deployment, configuration, resiliency, and most of all, with a little bit of hard work, security. And microservice architecture helped us to solve a few of other parameters as well. Well, with all of that out of our way, came out the hard part, our journey to bring our well-thought solution to life. So we, we have achieved a lot as a part of this journey, like localizing the data at the edge, simplifying the consumption of Kubernetes platform in the organization, improving the observability, and making sure that platform is well integrated and resilient enough. As a, that's what the, our need for the application was. These topics may itself take a dedicated session, but we are going to quickly go through each of them. So when we started uh, proof of concept of Kubernetes almost like two years ago, one of the important things that we wanted to solve is like, how do we keep the data from cloud in the store, which is store relevant, always relevant? So we used a Kafka-based architecture to bring store-specific data from cloud for any changes that could take place in the cloud. And that gets persisted on a data, database located within the store outside Kubernetes cluster on a VMware or any data that is produced at the store would be stored and forwarded back to the cloud. This is how we synchronize data at Edge for any cloud-specific changes. So this is how we kept uh, store as independent as possible. Next in the journey was, how do we simplify the consumption of Kubernetes platform? Kubernetes was new to the company, and uh, technologists were not very well aware of it. And it was very important that we simplify the consumption so that uh, we can build this Kubernetes-powered mindset in the organization and by reducing the learning curve of the technologist. All right, now getting an app deployed into Kubernetes cluster could be a little painful process with all the manifest that needs set, that's needed, specifically while deploying to thousands of stores. So GitOps model made more sense here. Basically we, went, basically, we wanted app team to worry about apps and not about how to get their apps into Kubernetes. We created our own custom CI/CD pipelines where once app teams drop their code in GitHub, everything is taken care of from building an image and pushing it to Walmart repository and using the same image and getting the app deployed into Kubernetes using charts. We will notify the app users between each and every stage of these. Next step in the journey was 
how do we improve the observability of the services, the system across thousands of cluster? This was very important. It was easy to do it in cloud where you have like few regional uh, compute environment, but here we are talking about thousands of Kubernetes cluster located across thousands of locations, not just in US, even outside US. It was a big challenge. Challenge was how do we get this logging and metrics data from these stores on thousands of clusters back to our site reliability team so they can work quickly, proactively on the problems that could happen. Observability is very critical for any application journey. Point of sale at edge makes it even more complex because of the scale that they operate in. All the way from making sure logs are available to getting metrics and being able to start triaging application performance problems. We started using Fluentd, Fluentbit to ship our logs to a Splunk cluster, and the same logs were sent to cold storage, which can be retrieved for audit needs. Along with that, we use Prometheus for metric scraping, and for alerting, we use our in-home custom notification bridge. To centralize app metrics across multiple stores, we ship certain metrics to a version of federated metrics backend and store them for a little over a year. That way, we can start mapping the trends post our busy holiday season. We also leverage application performance management for our app triaging. So next in the journey was, since it's going to be deployed in stores, the question was like, how secure this platform is? And uh, we didn't want it to get our customers with security risks. Another thing was like, how can we deploy these clusters across large number of stores, even in network bandwidth environment to distance locations? And how well integrated is this platform is with other open source technology, so when there are some platform support related issues, we continue to support it correctly and provide best uh, uh, experience to our business. Like Manish said, security is very critical for point of sale. We started looking at a platform and said to ourselves, app security should be a default offering. From making app communication secure by using Walmart sign sets to making sure secrets remain a secret. We basically wrote our custom operators for these use cases. In order to make sure we sustain in network outages, we fetch the secrets from our vault instance that's needed for the app and keep them available in the cluster at CD. So as, but as for the search, we started using Search Manager with our own custom plugins. This way we can request Walmart sign search and get them injected into Ingress Controller, which are, in our case is Istio. There are a few remote stores running in low bandwidth in distant locations. And during deployments, we certainly don't want to overwhelm our WAN network and cause any outages. So we implemented a local casting solution with network rate limiting that downloaded were throttled to make sure there's no impact to the store bandwidth. Image layers already pulled as part of the previous deployments became available locally on the clusters. The required layers for the new deployments could get downloaded. By now, everyone should have guessed the next term that I'm going to use, Walmart scale. With the scale, we need to operate. We needed a simple way to manage fleet of clusters across multiple stores and other environments. So we built our own custom in-home federated environment where we can manage Kubernetes clusters. Basically, we manage Kubernetes using Kubernetes. We started using federated control print for various purposes, from inventory management, namespace reservation, app and cluster lifecycle management, to name a few. Once we got this platform bit sorted out, the next big thing to tackle was the application resiliency across edge and cloud. So now everything looked great. We have edge-based Kubernetes cluster and we have cloud. But what happens if edge-based Kubernetes cluster becomes unstable, or even like server goes bad? And we wanted to have a resiliency at that point so that a customer can, are not impacted. So we built resiliency at the checkout register level outside of Kubernetes. They are going to be making calls to edge clusters over Envoy Ingress. And if the service or even cluster or even the store server is not healthy, it will fail over to the same set of services running in the cloud. So that's how we built a resiliency from checkout register standpoint. But what about application level resiliency? Checkout application is a composition of dozens of microservices deployed in Kubernetes cluster. Same set of services, we deployed it into cloud. We are leveraging STO service mesh to provide application level resiliency, where our edge cluster act as primary for checkout registers, and as an example, like service A within a Kubernetes cluster will be calling service B, it's going to be made over, the call is going to be made over Envoy Sidecar. And uh, service B, located in cloud, are going to be act as, acting as a secondary backup 
And when service B goes bad, Envoy is going to be sending a request back to service B in cloud. And when service B goes back up, it's recovered. Envoy sidecar proxy is going to be switching the traffic back to service B in, in Kubernetes cluster. This is how we make sure checkout system is resilient to the problem that could happen in our system. And we continue to provide best experience during last and critical step in customer journey. And with this, we would like to bring all together how Walmart Kubernetes platform is coming together. All right, as Manish pointed out, this is our Walmart Kubernetes platform, which showcases the power of Kubernetes in terms of integrating with proprietary and open source tools using custom CRDs where required. Now, so far we have rolled out to around 50 plus stores in US and uh, one each in China and Japan. And along this journey, we had a lot of learnings. Uh, as an example, like first being, integration is time consuming. We operate in brownfield environment and we have to integrate our system with the, uh, this new Kubernetes platform with the existing system that exists in Walmart. And it takes more time even to move services from cloud to edge, com edge, com edge compute environment in Kubernetes. It's not easy to lift and shift the services, even for the simplest services. And data needs to always follow the service. And one of the important thing is like edge environment often require different strategies and different platform component considering physical and technical constraint environment we operate in. Well, like people earlier called out, make best practices default by leveraging templates and charts which will help with easy consumption. Automate common workflows using orchestrators and operators where necessary. But last but not the least, for edge, be prepared for unexpected. For example, bandwidth limitations that was called out earlier. And our journey does, just doesn't end here. We have a lot to achieve. And there are a few cha open challenges that we wanted to solve. As first being providing data persistency within Kubernetes cluster. Currently, we are persisting data outside Kubernetes on a VM where VMs located within stored servers. We wanted to bring it inside so it's more simplified. Next being is we wanted to reduce compute in the store environment and being able to run uh, Kubernetes in the smallest footprint as possible. And third being uh, regionalizing the deployment. Now today we are deploying all our services and Kubernetes cluster from US cloud region. And due to distance location, deployment to our market store has been time consuming and it affects time to market. So we wanted to bring uh, market proximity for deployment and make our market self enable. And with this, we'll wrap up. Thank you for having us here. We are hiring, and we are hiring at all locations. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you for listening to us. Have a good day and enjoy the Sunday of the weather.